So last Friday, at around quarter past seven GMT, iNav 2.6 was finally released. So what we're going to do today is take a look at some of the new features and changes that affect us as fixed wing pilots. So let's take a look. So before we take a look at what's changed, I just want to point out that I've actually written an article for the INAV Fixed Wing Group website. So the changes that we're going to be going over are in there, and there's also links to the pull requests. So if you're interested in checking out in more detail some of these changes, if you go to that web page, which is up on the screen now, if you go to the very bottom, everything that we're di discussing, I've got links to the pull requests, and there's probably more on this page than what that we're going to actually look at so if you wanted to for example check out the azimuth element added to the osd if you click this it will take you straight to that pull request on github and you can see exactly what everything's all about so let's let's get on with it so what i've got set up is i've got my f405 over here so that's at the moment it's running i now have two point 5.2 and we're going to bring up the configurator so this is the inav 2.6.0 release configurator so this is what you would download from the site this isn't one that i've built for you know code i'm working on or anything like that so the first thing that i'm going to do is i'm just going to connect so obviously you know that this flight controller has the wrong version it's 2.5.2 which if you look up here on the screen you can actually see now so one of the things that have been added to the configurator is the flight controller firmware version. So there's two reasons why this was added. Firstly, it saves you going to CLI and typing version. If you just connect a flight controller like this, it will work with any flight controller. But also sometimes when you get uh, asked questions, people give you the configurator version and not necessarily the firmware version. And that's if you're trying to sort out a bug or, or a problem that someone's having, that's not really great for information. So now, if you have an issue with INAV, you can just look at this number here and say, right, I'm on version 2.5.2 in this case. Whereas before, it would have been the configurator version, which is 2.6.0. So it's just something that's it's handy for people knowing what's on their flight controllers, but also handy for if there's any issues that um, need to be resolved. So what i'll do now is i will flash this with 2.6 and then we'll get back and look at some of the initial changes right so it's back um what you can see at the moment we're not actually connected with the button so it says the, the uh, flight connector is uh, not connected up here that's not the physical connection it's actually the data connection so when you click this button it will work and you'll notice also if you do a save and reboot that the uh, firmware version number will disappear slightly and then come back once it reconnects with the flight controller so don't worry that that says not connected until it's actually connected via the connect button it won't actually be uh, the firmware displayed um, so before i carry on i just want to say that i'm actually going to put in the uh, contents the links to the different sections that I'm discussing. So if you want to skip ahead to any anything, that's fine. And as I mentioned, I'll put a link to the uh, document in the INAF fixed wing group for it, for the pull request numbers and a lot more detail, uh, just to save me having to repeat it in the YouTube description, to be honest. But it's all the information is already there. So um, there we go. So. I sped up that process rather than just doing a cut so you can see exactly all I've done. I've literally just flashed it. I've not configured anything with calibration whatsoever. So what I will do now is just connect. And the first change is actually pretty much an invisible change. So we have this box that pops up. And when you click airplane, there are a few settings that have actually changed. These are uh, basically things that were either really not right for a fixed wing or uh, to bring things in line. For example, on the preset here, there's a generic airplane. And when you did the 
uh, pop-up box settings, it set like PID stuff in there, but it didn't actually match up with this generic airplane. So what happens now is when the uh, rates and everything match up to this generic airplane setting, I'd still recommend clicking it because there are other things that may change by selecting that. Uh, but it's a lot more consistent throughout the uh, the INAV system. So other than the PID, PID presets here, what else has changed? We can see in the advanced tuning page. So one thing that has changed is the land after uh, return to home. So by default with the older versions of INAV, that was set to always, which for in all honesty, for a fixed wing is really not a great setting. It, because uh, you know the land is pretty much a control crash it just circles around and gets lower and lower until it hits the ground so for most most people on a fixed wing you don't really want the land however um, by the same token if you lose control of your aircraft and it's on a fail safe then you don't really want it circling around in the sky all day so this has now been changed from always to only on fail safe now, depending on your flying location, you may want to still change it to never. Um, so, for example, where I fly a lot of the time, there's about a 30 meter, maybe a 20 meter strip of ground and then trees either side of it. And it's based on your loiter radius. And so a loiter radius of 30 meters, which you know, most planes, well, the standard is set to 50 meters. So that's a hundred meter circle. It's not going to fit in that 30 meter bit of landing space that I have at my flying field. So for me to have land on is no good whatsoever. If I have a fail safe, I'll just let the battery die and it will come down. And unless it's a, like a 2S pack, there's usually enough to keep the servos and the flight controller going once the motor's died to just glide it down. So for me personally, I have this on never, but only on fail safe. If you're flying from a good wide open area is a good setting to have. So that's why that is on the defaults. What else has changed? So we've added, we've actually changed the waypoint radius. So if you're flying a waypoint mission, we've changed that to something more fitting of, again, a fixed wing. It was really set as a quad setting. So now that is a waypoint radius of 30 uh, meters. And there have been one or two other things, but uh, they're really for sort of uh, waypoint missions, that sort of thing. So if, if you want to check those out, as I say, link, look in the document and there's a link to the pull request and it's all detailed in there. You can follow it back through to the original issue or change request and see exactly the process that's involved. It's quite, quite useful for, for looking up. So that was the first thing that changed. So I'll go through starting at the top calibration nothing much has changed here at all the only thing you need to be aware of is if you have a compass you will need to recalibrate it in 2.6 you can't just import the 2.5 settings so you will need to recalibrate the compass but to be honest for most situations with a fixed wing doing a diff all copying that to clipboard and then reinserting that into 2.6 will work just fine there's only two uh, instances at the moment that I can think of where you need to actually change things and one is if you're using a compass but at fixed wing we don't tend to use compass right so mixer there's nothing really in here that I will mention same with outputs presets I've already mentioned the generic airplane what has changed however is the Dart 250G uh, preset. This has actually been changed to Mark Hoffman's recommended settings now, um, which if you go to the INAF fixed wing group and look at the build uh, page, they're the same settings as you'd have on there. So if you're following that guide, perfect. And if you've got a standard 250G, uh, you know, basically built from a plug and play, they're also fine. There's one thing that I will uh, note that I've actually put in bold on here is Mark recommends to change the weight of the roll to 80% and the pitch to 65%. Uh, he said it will work fine if you don't, but that's recommended for, for, these, for this plane. So that is the presets, nothing in ports. 
there's a couple of little bits in configuration that are quite useful. So what has been added is in the GPS, you can now add an offset and daylight savings. This is really useful if you don't live on GMT, basically. So if you're in Europe, America, Asia, anywhere like that, you can actually add the time zone offset in, it's in minutes, unfortunately. Um, so you need to take your offset in hours, times it by 60. Um, and you set that in there. So if I was in Germany, um, they've got an hour plus offset. So I would set that to 60 minutes. And what we also have is automatic daylight savings um, changes if you're in the EU or if you're in the USA. So you can just click those and it will automatically adjust when you get into summertime and then back into sort of standard time. These settings have been in the CLI, I don't know how long, but they've been in there for quite a while. They've just not been, I've, to be honest, I didn't even know about it until someone said, can we put them in configurator? So they're now in configurator, everyone can know about them. So that's, um, that's a quite a, a nice change. We've also added a toggle for GPS to use Galileo satellites which I would just recommend turning on. As long as your GPS module supports them, turn it on. Even if you're in America or Australia, if you don't know, uh, Galileo is a, an EU satellite system for GPS. But, you know, the world spins, satellites will still get picked up in other places and people have picked them up in America. So uh, it won't negatively affect you if you turn it on. It can only ever add to the satellites you can receive. So if your GPS module supports it, which will be in the specifications, most do. So all the B10 do, the Matex stuff does. Even the older M, uh, Neo MAN pucks support it. So there's a very good chance it will. So just turn that on. And your golden chances are you'll get more satellites, which is always a good thing. So what else do we have? Right, craft name. So this is a good one if you use the DJI goggles. There's a, a lot of things that don't actually go over to the goggles yet. Well, actually, it, it can go over, but DJI haven't implemented it in the OSD. That's probably the correct way of, of putting it. What some of the guys have done, which is pretty clever, is if you add, I believe one of the commands is colon W as your craft name, it will show in the craft name any warning messages that pop up. And there are other settings as well. I think one's for 3D speed, trip distance, and there's a few other different settings, but they're all in, in that documentation. So if you, if you use DJI, definitely have a look at that and you can get more information in your goggles that you can get already. That's it for the configuration page. Fail safe, nothing of interest. PID tuning, uh, there's some stuff in there if you fly multi-rotors, um, this unicorn filter, nothing for us though, so won't bother. Right, advanced tuning, what we have in here, right, return to home settings, there's been a couple of changes in here. So we've added the, RT, the RTH home altitude, which if you don't know what that is, um, basically it's the altitude the model will loiter when it reaches the home position. So for example, I could set return to home to 120 meters. Then when it gets home, I can set it to 40 meters. So what it will do is at least, so if it's below 120 meters, it will climb to 120 meters. If it's above it, it will stay at the altitude it's at. It will fly at that altitude home. And when it gets home, it will loiter down to this 40 meters uh, for the home altitude. It, again, it's something that was already in iNav. It's just been added to, to the uh, graphical user interface. So anything else that's um, worth noting, we've already covered land after RTH change for the defaults, but everything else is pretty much as it was. So you may have already spotted something that fixed wing pilots will really like, and that is that auto launch is now in configurator. You don't have to go through the uh, CLI to, to change it anymore. 
what has also happened is that it's been added into your goggles osd menu so if you want to change stuff at the field you can just use the osd menu and change parameters in there too and in in fact the whole auto launch system has been refactored it's got osd uh, displays now for different stages so it will tell you if you've armed but haven't raised your throttle for example it will then say you know ready to launch and you launch it launches and then it's uh, a nice smooth transition has been added to the end which is this last uh, setting here so what that will do is instead of getting to the top and then just flat level at your your chosen destination it would be a nice smooth transition out which lasts for in this case three seconds so you can configure it you can set it to zero so it just like as soon as it gets there just st stops and comes out again or you can have a nice smooth transition at the end so that's uh, another new thing uh, there's also if you use a buzzer there's a, a new beep so if you enable launch arm um, but don't raise your throttle there will be a beep which is similar to the ready beep but it is slightly different so if you before if you don't raise your throttle you'll have a beep warning you that you have and when you raise it the beep will change into the regular ready to launch beep so all these other settings are exactly the same as what was in the cli it's, you can still access it there of course and they've just been ordered so we have a couple for the pre-launch so idle throttle and the maximum throw angle we then have for the uh, detection phase so you have the threshold velocity and acceleration the detect time and then there's the launch phase which obviously is the motor delay the launch time spin up time launch throttle climb angle and the la launch time out and altitude which is obviously the, the limits to when it finishes and then finally we have post launch which is the end transition time so it's in a yeah, a logical order through the actual process itself so if we head over to the other side we have our fixed wing navigation settings and there's a couple of things that's been added in here so we have the cruise your rate we have allow manual throttle increase basically it allows you to increase your throttle if you're in a navigation mode but it doesn't let you go lower than you had it already set at your cruise throttle loiter direction so by default it's right but you can change it to left or the one i like is your so if you put it in loiter and you're loitering around to the right you can put the your stick left and it will start loitering to the left so it's quite a nice little feature and finally control smoothness has been added so it's easy to adjust that there's one other new section which is the waypoint navigation settings so you can now change your waypoint radius and your waypoint safe distance a lot easier in the configurator so the next section is programming now this has had quite a few changes so the first thing you'll notice is there's uh, now eight global variables instead of four we have 32 uh, programming lines on there so the actual amount of program that you can do has increased a fair bit but you'll notice that the tabs are missing this is because everything is now on this page so logic conditions and global functions have now merged and they're all just in one place for example you can set a switch up say rc channel six that's your logic condition and then you can set your vtx power level to power level four and it should actually put up an active thing oh sorry yeah enable logic condition zero so that's how you do it now so it's all just in the one place this does have one slight issue if you've used programming before when you do the diff and the, the insert into 2.6 it doesn't actually copy across any of the global functions that you had in 2.5 and previous so what i'd recommend you do before you um update to 2.6 go into your 2.5 go into the programming and the global functions and take a screen grab that's the easiest thing to do and then what you can do is when it reinserts it say you've got eight logic conditions just add your global functions after that the logic condition number will still be the same 
It's just that they're, they're all on the one page now. That's now been updated in the INAV release notes. So that's covered in there, but it's also in the, the document that I, I wrote on the INAV fixed wing group. So they're the two issues that you could potentially have when doing an update to 2.6 from 2.5. Calibrate the compass and also the global functions will not just import. You have to do it manually. Uh, what else has been added here? So we've got some extra functions. We can set the OSD layout. There are some trigonometry functions, uh, mappings, and set RC channel. There's also some more in the flights. So if we go down, there's uh, current waypoint index, uh, waypoint action. There's uh, 3D home distance, which is uh, from your home point to the model, a straight line um, between the two. So that's the exact distance from the home point to the model. And there's also crossfire uh, signal to noise ratio and link quality. So all that information is now available as um, variables in the programming. So nothing has really changed in receiver, I don't believe. Oh yes, yeah, sorry. If you're a FreeSky user, uh, F port two has now been implemented, so you can use that. And no, the uh, ghost isn't there yet. Uh, nothing has changed in the modes. Adjustments. There's been a couple of changes in here. So the first thing is you can now have twenty adjustments, which I believe it used to be twelve. So there's an extra eight adjustments. And there are a few extra uh, things that you can adjust. So you could adjust the VTX power level before, but there's the uh, TPA adjustment, TPA breakpoint adjustment, and control smoothness. <laughs> control smoothness can now also be adjusted in flight. So that covers adjustments, GPS, nothing in there. Mission control. I uh, don't know if I'll be able to show this, but when you put a waypoint in, there's a nice little information box that shows how many meters it is because you have to put it in centimeters. So it's it's just a nice little um, uh, validation of, of a meter value that you in, input. OSD, there have been a couple of additions to the OSD. All right, so the first thing that we come across is the Crossfire RF statistics. So you can actually now see the RSSI and uh, DBM link quality in percent, signal to noise ratio, and the, the TX power in milliwatts. So all that can now be shown on the screen. There are the global variables. So this, this is useful if you're doing programming and want to test, you can actually put the first four um, global variables on the OSD. And again, you just click it on and drag it to where you want it. So there you go, G, G1, G0. And, and that will obviously fill with whatever is stored in them. These are the adjustments. So you have the TPA and control smoothness has been added on here. What I will just go over is you can change the Crossfire LQ format. There's helpers for these as well to, to let you know what, what's going on. And also there have been some alarms added for Crossfire as well. So other than the asthma that I can't actually find, which was supposed to be in 2.6, that's now that covered. So LED strip, nothing has changed. Sensors, nothing has changed yet. Uh, I believe in um, black box logging, the uh, maximum rate has been changed, but other than that, it's the same. So there are a couple of things that have changed that aren't visible in the configurator itself. So the first one that I'll mention is air mode is now lo no longer shown on the OSD. It will show acro instead because that is the correct flight mode. I've gone into more details in documentation and I also have a video specifically on that. So I won't cover that any further. A new feature is safe homes, which is a really cool feature. Um, especially as I mentioned earlier in the video, where I fly from is a very slim, strip it's maybe say 20 to 30 meters wide so not enough space to do an emergency landing but what i can do is uh set a safe home so if i had say less than 200 meters radius away a nice flat area 
I can actually set a safe home on that area. What that will do is when I arm, it will detect the safe home. And if you've got multiples, it will choose the closest one to you. And it will set that as the home point. So if I have, if I do return to home or uh, if I have more importantly, a fail safe, it will actually come back to that home point where if that's a nice flat open area, I could land there automatically. And uh, someone else mentioned that this is actually really helpful for if you fly at a club where there's a lot of uh, traditional guys and they don't like you returning to home right above the flight path and loitering there. So you can set your safe home you know, a few hundred meters away and then fly back to there, loiter, and you don't interfere with anyone else's flying. So it's a really nice feature. One thing I thought was included, but it isn't going to be around till 2.7, is the ability to change the default uh, maximum radius for the safe home. So at the moment, it is a 200 meter radius, but in 2.7, possibly maybe a, a 2.6.1 or something like that, maybe, you can actually change this up to 650 meters, which that for what safe homes was designed to do it is absolutely plenty of distance what safe homes isn't is um a system for if you do say uh or long range waypoint mission beyond you know control it's not a system to say right i'm just passing this safe home or i'm near this safe home and i have an emergency to go land there it's not that type of system at all it is it's designed to be close to the pilot so if at very least in the case of a fail safe they can while the plane's coming back they can walk to where the safe home is and be there to make sure that there are no people around that sort of thing so it's it's not a um alternate landing spot would be the, the correct phrase it is um yeah for a, a waypoint mission or long range or anything like that it is just a safe location near to where you are arming that safe homes so as you can see i've just done a dump and you can see there are eight safe homes in total i'm not going to go into how you set these it's all in the documentation and maybe i'll cover it in another video on its own just so it's easier for people to find but it's all just in here set it in cli and you're good to go Another thing that has been added, which I'm, again, not going to go into too much detail about, is the ability to use external smart port sensors. So, for example, you have an external smart port current sensor, but your flight controller doesn't have a current sensor. You can uh, dedicate a UART to the smart ports. Again, um, this is all documented inf information you can find via the pull request, so check out the uh, document on our fixed wing group for that and it will take you straight to the pull request last couple of things to mention the rest of I've, I've again covered in the document but um things that people might find useful is that this is going to be the last INAV release that supports f3 processors so they've already been removed from 2.7 this is not changing it's uh, a final thing so if you've got f3 this is the last version of INAV that will run on it. For GPS, UBlox 9 and M9N GPS modules have been added, so you can use those modules now. The arming screen now features the aircraft name, so when you arm, even if you don't have it shown anywhere else in the OSD, when you, if you're recording your DVR, when you arm, it will show the aircraft name. But I think I'm going to leave it there. There's quite a lot to digest. And again, as I mentioned, the document will have a lot more information and all the links to uh, investigate even further. So thank you very much, guys, for watching. See you on the next one. Fly your models like you stole them and have a great time. See ya.